Roberts. Uh, Senator Roberts, you have the call. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for being here again. Uh, I've got some, a number of questions, but they're, they're fairly short, I think, and straightforward for you. Recommendation one of the shot report into the ARTC was to address skills deficiencies in the ARTC. Now, I note that you've hired a new chair, Mr. Peter Duncan. Has Mr. Duncan ever built a railway? Uh, uh, sorry, Senator, has Mr. Duncan ever built a railway? Yes. Uh, Mr. Duncan is the chair of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his skills go to the requisite skills to be able to lead a board and our organisation. He's certainly familiar with long linear infrastructure, the with engineering what? long linear infrastructure, very familiar with that from his prior roles. Uh, what sort of long? Roads and water. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, and and uh, it's, it's really not a matter for me to comment on the appointment of uh, other directors and, and Mr Duncan in a role. What I would say is the board are working uh, really well with myself and holding me to account to make sure we've got the requisite skills to both uh, operate, maintain and create the network. And further to the recommendations, a key recommendation from Dr Schott's report and the review was the establishment of the inland rail subsidiary and the establishment of the board in parallel. So that's why today we sit here, Nick is the new CEO to inland rail that subsidiary is now fully fledged. We are, and they have both a chair and a board in place for the construction of inland rail. Okay, thank you. I, I um, appreciate and understand the distinctions between governance, management, and uh, uh, trusteeship, if you like. So, thank you. But he has not built a, a, a railway, but he's done other long infrastructure. Yes. Thank you. The other new hire, senior hire is Dr. Colette Burke, who is a qualified engineer. Can you confirm her engineering qualification, please? Sorry, I, I won't be able to. Uh, I know that I know that Colette is a esteemed and qualified engineer, but I don't have those details in front of me. Okay, okay. could we get it on notice, please? No problems. Thank you. There are reports, and these may be old, that Dr. Burke is also contributing to the Marinus link from Tasmania to Victoria and Snowy Hydro too. Are these still <coughs> concurrent appointments? Uh, as all directors, uh, Colette, uh, director on the board, has made clear what other commitments or if there's any conflicts at play. Uh, so I can confirm that is the case. So she's still on, on the other two yes. boards. Okay, thank you. Uh, Minister, has the government made any other appointments to ARTC that addresses the skills deficiencies identified in the SHOT report? I don't have that information with me, but I can take it on notice. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister. What I can say, Senator, of course, is there's a, a secondary board now, the subsidiary oh, board, a subsidiary of, board, a subsidiary board yeah. of um, Inland Rail, uh, which has six uh, directors, all have extensive infrastructure experience. Okay, thank you. In the earlier discussion on Inland Rail, I asked what has been called the Gunduindi to Gladstone alignment. I asked about it. I was advised this is in the hands of the Queensland Government. I find that surprising when the Commonwealth Government is paying for the project. So it sounds like the, the Queensland Government is going to decide how to sp the Commonwealth to spend the money. The Gundawindi to Gladstone route is substantially cheaper, and I know there is at least one private end partnership trying to get the attention of government with extensive expertise in railroads, freight, construction and shipping. And they have money to spend. They're willing to make the commitment, especially on the Shirat Basin link from Murrumbah to Banana. I don't understand when the government is juggling budget deficits moving forward why it is proving so hard to get even a meeting about a public-private partnership happening on this alternative route. Uh, and cool. Senator, so what I can say, and Nick, I might, might take the question. Um, just to be really clear, there's a few things happening there in parallel. So at the moment, Inland Rail Proprietary Limited headed by Nick, are continuing the work around the design, the work that heads over the Toowoomba range to Ebenezer and working closely with the National Intermodal Company on the connection at Ebenezer. Uh, so that's, that's what Inland Rail are focused on. 
I am aware that there is uh, some early business case development for other alternate options, Gundawindi or Toowoomba to Gladstone, that the Queensland Government uh, have had some insight so to. So both, both Gundawindi to Gladstone and Toowoomba to Gladstone are being... Yep. I have heard, well. heard <coughs> both, <coughs> that's right, and I am absolutely acutely aware of the private interests that you've mentioned. Um, and we, we've made it clear when they proponent, it, like we would anyone that was interested in either developing, adjoining or working around the network, given we're really the National Rail Network Manager, uh, when they get to a point that they're at an EIS, so an environmental impact statement, we'll be happy to uh, support what type of views or impacts that would have, or like in a practical sense from ourselves, what they might consider in that input. So I, I wouldn't think that we're, we, and we have met, so I, um, I'm a little bit lost with the statement that, that it's hard to work, like to get that meeting. So you've already been working with them? Uh, we've had a couple of meetings around what we can do at different stages as they progress their development to offer them what, whatever practical support as we would any other adjoining infrastructure manager. So would you be willing to meet with um, a private investor who's willing to uh, fund the, the railroad construction from Surat Basin from Murrumbah to Banana? Well, we, we meet with a number of proponents. That one is a long way from our network, but I certainly um, we, we've met with a number of people nationally that are looking at different things, mostly where it's connected to our network. But um, uh, um, how about inland rail? Would you be willing to meet to consider? Well, we'd be willing to meet to assist um, Senator with um, indicative pricing um, that we've experienced per kilometre. It's outside our scope in terms of our current remit. Uh, we're, we're going from border to Toowoomba and then down to Kagaroo, and that's where our focus is around the environmental approvals and land acquisition at present. <coughs> and that's, that's the vast majority of the cost of inland rail from Toowoomba to Brisbane, as it's, I understand it. It's a, a significant part of inland rail. It's not the vast majority. <coughs> okay. We'll argue about that another time. Does the ARTC have any other public-private <coughs> partnerships in place for inland rail? By private, I mean actually contributing private funding to the project. Uh, no. The private partnership uh, contract has ceased. Thank you. Does the ARTC have any signed agreements in the Queensland leg of inland rail? And if so, which? Signed agreements with yes. agencies, Senator? Or any, any agreements committing inland rail to either? Yes, we do. We have multiple land agreements in place. We are uh, well developed with our environmental approvals. That's for the Toowoomba to Ebenezer route? Uh, that's from the uh, border to uh, Toowoomba, or Gowrie the route, across the column line. line. And um, we expect to um, be in a position to go to public exhibition number two in the last quarter of this year with that EIS approval. What's the sunk cost of inland rail specifically for the Queensland sections? And you can do that on notice if that's... Do that on notice. I can advise the Senate that uh, to date, or to the end of March, um, we've spent 4.3 billion on the entire program. In Queensland? In no, section. across the entire, the entire program. program. Okay. Could I have the uh, well? The sunk cost for Queensland? Yes, please. Uh, the rail line from Ebenezer to the port of Brisbane is constrained. The available capacity on that line does not allow for the volume of freight necessary to ever get the construction cost back. The cost of the tunnel down the mountain is, without a doubt, 20 billion dollars and it won't be necessary if the rail line terminates in the port of Gladstone. Are they considerations you, you're working on in the back of your mind? Our current scope of work is to take double stack container trains to um, Ebenezer and then they are transitioned to single stack to Kangaroo. <coughs> That's our scope. Okay. I don't understand the, why this economic <coughs> reality has not been seized upon to, to reset the planning towards the Gundawindi to Gladstone route with freight destined for the aircraft airport at Wellcamp coming down from the miles into Modal to Wellcamp. What's, are you considering that as part of the alternative? Uh, well, we're not considering an alternative, but what we are considering is, is um, getting the environmental approvals and land acquisition to Toowoomba as a priority, um, and we're continuing with the um, uh, Kangaroo section uh, with three, three EISs um, concurrently in that space. You're aware of the um, massive concerns about the Condamine crossing? Yes, we are, and we've undertaken very significant uh, hydrological studies. Uh, those studies have been to a flood panel 
uh, and have been accepted uh, as part of the uh, EIS process. And the foundation for the elevated section of that line, which would be fairly lengthy? Yes, there's a significant elevated section through the Condom Mine to improve resilience and reliability uh, during flood periods. And you're aware of the cost? We are working through the cost. Uh, the cost will be subject to the conditions that the EIS um, uh, ultimately puts upon us from the Coordinator General's office in, in Queensland, uh, plus the timeline in terms of when that's going to be built with inflation and the likes and design and geotech that's going on. Um, we're also doing some embankment trials in that area to uh, ascertain what settlement impacts will be and what that means from an engineering perspective so we can more accurately define cost and scope. Minister, the outcome of this review by ARTC and the Queensland Government of the Queensland leg, in my opinion, must be the abandonment of the Condamine floodplain crossing of this railway line, otherwise the railway line won't be built. That's my opinion. Okay, and thank you. I'd like to know your feedback on that. Uh, what, what are you get, getting in the way of reassurance from Inland Rail? Well, we, we take our advice from the experts, Senator Roberts and Are they I, outside thank Inland you. Rail or I inside? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your view. Um, are you getting experts from inside inland rail as well as outside inland rail, especially on the Condamine crossing? We, we get experts. Uh, we get our expert um, opinions from inland rail and also um, um, our departmental people. But, but thank you for your view. I'll pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. You're most welcome. Thanks very much, Senator Rob.